A big challenge for a lot of data teams continues to be successfully creating a clear data model. And while tools like DBT make it easier than ever to actually write the code you need, the design component still is always going to require your own strategic thinking. But having said that, when you're able to combine a great tooling option like DBT with a simple but clear strategy, it can be a recipe for really great long-term success on the data modeling front. So with that topic in mind, over the next few videos, I'm going to be sharing a few lessons from a pre-recorded training where I walk through the steps to create your own, what I call warehouse layer in your project through DBT and deploying it into a database. In this first video, we're going to start with the lesson on creating dimension tables. And then over the next two weeks, we'll move to creating a fact table and finally implementing some baseline tests. Throughout all these, you'll see how to leverage configurations of DBT in particular with the strategy of star schema dimensional modeling. And we'll even talk about ways to structure the queries themselves to help you be as successful as possible with that. So with that said, let's now hop over to the initial training lesson on creating dimension. In this lesson now, we are going to build our foundational star schema that we planned out earlier in this section. So here we are on the next step for creating warehouse models. And we see we have dimensions, facts, surrogate keys. We'll get into all of this as we go through here. And one thing I want to point out is here in the notes or in our development files, there's a text file called plan.txt. And here's where I just outlined a lot of what we've already talked about. And I would encourage you to do something similar for this as you're going through and planning just to help keep you guided. And we've focused in on the deliverable. We talked about the marts, this is that reverse engineering idea. The warehouse, so we have our main fact and the surrounding dimensions. I've listed out all of the potential metrics that would be included here. This is an expanded version of what we talked about earlier. I already had these ready to go, so I just put them all through here. And then the keys here are what we would expect to join to the different dimensions. So we wanna be able to join to get information about a game, about the teams, about the day of the game, stuff like that. And SK, it stands for surrogate key. Surrogate key is an internal key that we create during our development. It doesn't exist in the real world, but it's for us to better manage our internal architecture. It's a very good practice and I'll show you how to add it. And then just going below, we have the staging models and the raw data being included. So just for you to know, this is all here and just to keep us guided. And this is something I would recommend doing as well. All right, so what we wanna do is go through a similar process that we did with the staging layer, but do it again for Marts now. First things first, we're on main. Let's just do a quick git pull to double check. We got everything, we're up to date. And I'm going to create a new branch and I'll call this, we'll do git branch add warehouse. Git checkout add warehouse. Make sure we are on it and there we are. Now let's talk through this. So what we wanna do is create a new layer for the warehouse tables. And the way we can do this is create a new directory called warehouse. And now we can see we have our staging in our warehouse. And now you can start to see how we're lining this up with our general approach, but now implementing it here tactically in DBT. But if we go back here and go under add warehouse, you can see I also have the dimensions and facts broken up into more subdirectories. I mentioned with DBT, it's totally fine to keep drilling in further if you need to. So this helps us stay organized. And we're gonna follow the same structure that we did with staging as well. If I just go back here where we have the YAML files followed by the actual models. We're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna have our dims and our facts, and within each of them, we're gonna have our schema here. And this is where we're gonna to start to take advantage of tests and stuff like that. So you'll see that come into play. So let's go through this. So under warehouse, we're gonna go new folder, dimensions, and we'll just start, well, I'll just do both of them, dimensions, facts. But like I said, we're gonna start with dimensions. So the first one we'll do is dim teams, because this one has a little bit more going on in it, and it'll just be a little easier to explain. So under dimensions, Let's create a new file called dim teams.sql. Remember, these are the models that we're building. Copy and paste this in here. So in here, you can see we're doing select stars and uh, each of these CTEs. And this can be seen as similar to importing modules if you're doing stuff on Python. There's a lot of benefits here, again, for organization. And we don't have to constantly refer to this through this whole long name here. We can just call it franchises and then later on just refer to it that way and just keep things cleaner while also quickly understanding what's being included. And I'll also point out that this is a nice way to understand where the data is coming from strictly by looking at the name. We can very quickly see that this is a staging model, that this is coming from this source and this table. So again, just real quick, and as your project expands, having this just instantly clear to a developer is really helpful and just helps you stay organized. The other value here with dbt is by using this ref function and the brackets, it's called Jinja, instead, 
doing it like this instead of hard coding your tables is going to allow it to compile through those different environments and use all of the functionality of dbt so that's why we do it here so i'm actually going to delete all of the columns and just explain how i would structure a dimension table and this is what i follow so first is a surrogate key and you can think of that as the primary unique value for that table for a given record and we mentioned it's possible for records to change over time so it gives us a way to control internally what is unique about the table and what we would expect to be unique so this can be a combination of columns and we say those should all be unique and this is a way to do it. And then we use these for joins within our warehouse. And then I have a section for descriptive values because we mentioned that's what a dimension is for, descriptions, booleans, stuff like that. So if you have those, I'd like to just create a header and organize myself to say, this is what belongs here. And then at the very end are DW values, which stands for data warehouse values. And this is more for if you're doing the slowly changing dimension and you wanna keep track of when things were updated, when they were inactivated or deleted, we're not really doing anything with that here, but this is where I would place that uh, and just have a dedicated section for that again, just to keep yourself organized. So I'm gonna undo this here. So here, for example, you might have deleted that active. I just have all these null because again, we're not incrementally loading, but this is an area where that would fall into place and just again, for structure. And here is where we're generating the surrogate key. We're saying it's a combination of these IDs, which should be unique for a given record. And for example, the coach ID or the, the GM ID may change over time. So if it does, it'll get a different SK and it'll be a quick way for us to understand what's unique because if for some reason we get a duplicate record, it'll have the same SK and we can quickly catch that through a test and stuff like that. So it simplifies a lot of stuff, but we're gonna have to do something for this to work because DBT utils is a, an outside package and we'll see what I mean by that in a second. This looks good for right now, but I wanna show you something when I try to compile this. Something's gonna error out and I'll explain why that is. Okay, so here we can see dbt utils is undefined. It's calling a macro that, it's calling a macro that does not exist. Check for typos or install package dependencies. So this is a dbt specific thing and basically what's going on is dbt provides public packages for anybody to use. You can bring them into your project to simplify things, to avoid reinventing the wheel and this is one of them. So. If, you open up a link called hub.getdbt.com. You can see there's a lot of things here. So you can basically import them into your own project. So utils is a really common one. It's created by dbt labs and they have a lot of things in here. One of which is about surrogate keys. So creating a surrogate key. And here you can see this is how you use it. Implements a cross database way to generate hash values. So we're gonna use this here to generate our own surrogate keys. And this is a common thing that you can see people do. And this is what I use a lot. And another one we're gonna use is date spine, which is going to create a, basically an entire table full of records of each individual date for a given time period. So it's a quick way to create a table full of dates. And then we can take those values and customize them. And we'll see what that means, but that's just a heads up. Another thing we're gonna do here shortly. So how do we get this in here? There's a few steps. And again, this is a DBT specific thing, but I'll show you how to do it. Number one, you need to install a packages.yaml file. And this is what's going to allow us to import it essentially into our project. So at the root level, new file packages.yaml and just paste that in here. And what this is saying is here's a package that we want to import into our project and here's the version. Just because we did that, it's still not going to work. There's one more command we have to run to essentially trigger the import and that is dbt deps, D-E-P-S. And that is going to go grab it and install it. And we can see it added this other file to our project. And we can also see under dbt packages, this is all here as well. So we can see everything that's in here that we're working on. And we could go and find the specific logic for this if we wanted to. You can do that on your own. All right, so now with that set, let's try this again, dbt compile. Okay, so that worked. Let's go to target compiled. Now we can see under dim teams, we can see those ref functions worked. It compiled it here. There's no surrogate key. Did I not save this? Oh, I, this is an old one. This is one I was working on before. It's actually, I wanna go under dimensions, dim team. So you won't see those other ones. That was from me practicing. And here we go. So here is the surrogate key logic that was dropped in here. So it's concatenating all of the different columns for it. It's making sure they're all formatted as strings. It's doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes to make sure it works properly. So that's what's happening. Great, so now we have this ready to go. Now, the only other thing here is we want these deployed as tables because these are our warehouse tables. We don't want them to be views. How do we change that? 
for dbt purposes, we're going to go to dbtproject.yaml, and we're going to follow the same idea here. But instead, what we're going to do, you can just copy all of this. And instead of staging, we want it to go to everything in warehouse. So we'll change this to warehouse. And we don't want it as a view. We want it as a table. And we don't want it to go to staging. We want in the future, once we get to production, we're not there yet. Once we get to production, we want this to go to a schema called warehouse. And just in case you didn't watch how that worked in the previous video, this is going to work with our custom macro that we added before. So that once we change the target to prod, it's going to put it just in a warehouse schema. So that's how that's going to work. And all of this should be updated for you here as well. So you can make sure you're keeping up. All right, moving along. So with that said, let's now deploy dim teams and see what happens. So dbt run s and I'm just going to go dim team. So you can select the specific table, the specific model you want to run. And so here we can see it created a table this time, not a view. And there were 32 rows. Let's now go back to our database and refresh. I'm going to refresh my own schema. Now there should be something under tables and here it is. So let's select all from dev dim teams. And there it is. So here we can see now what was created and we can see that it gave a unique hash value for every record. It joined everything together and brought together those columns from the underlying sources. And you can see it was actually very simple because we didn't have to do any renaming or anything here because we already handled that. So we just had to grab the column. And that's really the beauty of this process here. It makes it really easy as you get going. So now we have all this information right here. We can see this one has no general manager at this time and it's looking good. So now that we know how this works, let's go through and add the other dimensions real quick. So we'll do dim games. I'm going to copy this logic here. And here you can see it's the same thing. We have booleans. I have a separate section for dates. I didn't have that for teams because we didn't have that columns. I guess I could have added as of date. So you could potentially add that there. Descriptive values, keys. But this time there's only one underlying staging model that we're using, but that's okay. So let's see how this works. dbt run dim games. And again, I commented this out in case you want to use this in the future. This definitely has more records and we can go, let's limit this to 10 and here everything is here. So now this has been moved along now to a dimension table. You can see all of these are descriptive values. There's nothing we're aggregating on here. It's just more context. So the last one for dimensions will be dim calendar date. And this is one where I said where we're going to use the date spine logic. Here we can see it's grabbing all those values, placing it into a CTE. And then I'm grabbing it and adding some more options to that date. This way we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time we want to get a new part of a date. We can set it once and just grab from it. So for example, what's the day of the week? What's the quarter that this falls into? How, what's the short text name of the month? What are, what's the long date? What's the month? All these things we can do at one time and have it set. So this will make probably more sense when you see it. Looks like this should be, I should make this plural. And if we check this here, we can see we have an SK, a date, and then all these descriptive values that we can quickly reference whenever we want. And if you have some sort of internal custom way of referring to dates. Maybe there's a specific way you like to see it. I've seen teams want to see the week end to end of what's there. What was the Sunday to Saturday week and have a text field for that. So you could do something like that for every single row and just have it set one time. Let's go ahead and commit a few of these changes here. So we have add packages. We can add this right here, add warehouse config, which we can include with this here. And the reason I'm breaking this up is again, so we have that log of commits. So if we look here, we can see those different specific changes we made and then add initial dimensions and we can commit those. So we can keep moving along as we work here. So we'll stop this video here. We've added the dimensions. Next, we'll look at adding the fact table and bringing that all together.